welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run through the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the course of the next five days. It is remaining fairly cold and fairly dry. There will be a few patches of precipitation sinking from the north to south over the course of the next couple of days but mostly it is dry and relatively cool with frosts at least in the south uh, perhaps turning more widespread towards the end of the week as we see slightly colder air masses pushing from the north as we head into the longer range as we see in the gfs gm eastern of and the ensemble towards the weekend and next week so it might be we'll see sort of oscillating high pressure low pressure um, with the jet stream pretty much over the top of us so there will be times of drier cold weather but there will also be times of wet, windy and milder weather as well. And there is a pattern perhaps into the first week of January for the tropospheric polar vortex to drop into northeast Canada and Greenland. Now that is associated with very cold air, which probably will not reach the UK. But what it will do is fuel low pressure systems, create an even larger temperature contrast in the North Atlantic and could fuel very stormy conditions, perhaps in the longer range. Now this is sort of day 10 to day 14, but we are seeing signs of it from the GM and the ECMWF with those lower heights dropping into northeast Canada and Greenland and the GFS in the longer term actually does produce very stormy conditions for a time with big low pressure systems pushing in from the west. Now it wouldn't be actually that mild, it probably would be quite cold as that cold air fueling the low pressure systems does drift across the Atlantic but it is relatively uh, moderated towards the surface uh, so it won't be too cold but still probably keeping us below average so yeah it could be very unsettled in the longer term we'll have a look at that in detail in the second half of the video so you remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link's in description and if you can see on the live radar at the moment it's a very dry and pleasant day now many areas in the south we're up to quite harsh overnight frost but many areas now are pretty pleasant with some clear skies especially through england and wales and those temperatures recovering to around average or maybe still slightly below average for the time of year contrast further north and westwards even though it is dry there is some thick cloud and some patchy drizzle in places but those temperatures are slightly milder around the 10 degree mark so it's milder in the north and colder in the south and that will remain probably for the next day or so but probably towards the end of this working week we will see it sort of turning um, back towards normal where it's colder in the north and milder in the south but overall most people will be average to below average in terms of surface temperatures but as i said it is remaining fairly dry now if you put on the temperatures as of around midday as i'm recording this you can see that contrast cold in the south quite a bit milder further north to west with the warmest temperatures probably into parts of northern and eastern scotland again probably due to the fern effect here you can see the high pressure is sat over england but it means it's actually relatively strong southwesterly winds now it isn't pushing in an exceptionally milder air mass but it is milder air and that air as it descends over the scottish mountains it sinks becomes more dense and warms up as it does uh, head into northern and eastern scotland but, as I said, it is much colder further south. As you can see, these uh, pockets of temperatures hardly getting above freezing. There there's, there, there's probably some thicker cloud and some lingering fog patches as well. And this is just, as I said, going to be the pattern for the next 24 hours or so for eventually cooler air will sweep in for all in terms of the upper air temperatures and towards the surface conditions towards uh, Wednesday, Thursday time. So if we do put on the UKV now, you can see it's a relatively dry day in this afternoon. You can see there is plenty of sunny skies through England and Wales, but as I said, further north to westwards, thicker cloud and some patchy drizzle in places. Overnight tonight, where we have that slither of clearer skies through the south, um, southern, central, uh, western, even parts of East Anglia as well, we could see again another harsh overnight frost. But you can see weather front approaching through Scotland. Now, that is actually pushing in colder upper air temperatures um, into Scotland. So, yes, it is cold in the south, but the upper air temperatures are not actually that cold because we have that inversion that we've been talking about a lot over the past sort of five days or so. 
So that cold upper air temperatures is behind this weather front that is sweeping southwards through Wednesday into Thursday. A few showers for Scotland. The most important thing is it's probably actually going to put in a lot fresher, but also some drier air, which means there's going to be less cloud. Yes, a few showers, but generally you can see there are clearer skies around for many. And that means Thursday it's probably going to be a chilly day. Nothing exceptionally cold, but chilly, and a lot of clear skies and dry weather widely, not just in areas of England and Wales, through Northern Ireland, Scotland, and the Republic of Ireland, which right now are pretty cloudy and mild. It's going to be cooler, but also clearer as well. As we head into Friday, more cloud does drift in with another change in air mass, but again, nothing too exceptional into Saturday, just some thicker cloud that making it feel a little bit more miserable out there through Saturday afternoon. And this, as I said, is going to be sort of the recurring theme with the milder, um, more unsettled sectors. Um, it's, they're, they're going to be even more uh, milder and unsettled into next week as we see more oscillating pressure patterns over the top of us. And you can see as we head into Sunday, you can see still this quite miserable, um, cloudy and probably drizzly sort of pattern. Now it is associated with quite warm upper air temperatures there um, as we see warmer air drift in around the high pressure and we'll see more low pressure systems probably drop in from the northwest through Sunday as well. And you can see how we have just have oscillating colder and milder sectors through the end of this week into, uh, into early next week. And that's why we're seeing a lot of changes um, in sort of those cloudy conditions, dry, fresh conditions as well. Now, if you go over to the two meter temperatures, you can see over the course of this afternoon, temperatures are widely still cold in many central and southern areas, three to five degrees, further north and westwards, quite a bit milder, eight to ten degrees. Overnight tonight, where we have that slither of clear skies, again, minus two or three widely, but as we head into tomorrow, it is going to be a widely cooler day in the far southeast but also in scotland as well with that cold area drifting in behind that weather front of areas through the midlands northern england wales republic of ireland maybe eight to ten degrees through wednesday night into thursday all areas will have a chance of an overnight frost pretty much up and down the british isles temperatures are dropping to around freezing or so not quite as widespread like well below freezing but still around that freezing point and then as we head into thursday afternoon a widely cool day but nothing exceptionally cold temperatures around five to seven degrees but pretty much up and down the country here there's no mild air in the north and cold air in the south as we head into friday overnight temperatures again dropping down towards the freezing point quite widely so widespread overnight frost could be severe in places in the north and the west um, but again not particularly severe compared to what we saw a couple of nights ago where we saw those temperatures dropping down to sort of minus eight to minus ten under the inversion through Friday, again, it's a relatively cool day, sort of 5 to 7 degrees. And then into Saturday, another frost in the south where we hold on to that colder air. And then into Saturday, again, 6 to 8 degrees. And then again into Sunday, seeing frost in places. So you can see it is not exceptionally cold the next five days, but it's not exceptionally mild either. Um, there will be pleasant conditions out there. I think the big thing that we'll take away from this is it's going to be dry. There will be some patchy rain coming through at times with some of these weather fronts as we oscillate between air mass but it is generally pretty dry so yes the temperatures may be anywhere from sort of five to ten degrees in a day and around minus two or three to maybe two or three uh, plus two or three overnight so this temperature will be fluctuating but the big thing is it's going to be dry and that's the best thing we can ask for really through January so this is whatever really the air mass we get it's always going to feel a little bit nippy out there so if we do now go over to the GFS and see what that's showing for the longer range, you can see the high pressure over the top of us at the moment. Brief northerly wind through Wednesday, and that's that cooler air mass running in for all. And then again, maybe a slight change of air mass once again through Saturday round the high. And then eventually we could see quite a potent northerly wind there through Monday down the eastern half. But again, not got a lot of ridging in the Atlantic, so it does mean it's going to be relatively short-lived. And we generally stay sort of oscillating between westerly conditions whether it's sort of northwesterly or southwesterly, with milder and cooler air masses pushing in at times. However, into the longer range, you can see all these purples starting to build more through Greenland and northeast Canada, and that's the tropospheric polar vortex completely taking over through uh, the North Atlantic, giving us very stormy conditions through the first week of February. Now, as I said, this is in the longer range, it's 300 hours plus, but it would be very unsettled and pretty chilly as well with the northwesterly flow there. Again, that air over 
Greenland and northern Canada is bitterly cold, and by the time it gets to the UK, it's heavily moder moderated, but it still would be chilly at the surface um, and we do keep that very unsettled theme all the way to the end of the run again we'll have to see how high pressure interacts to our south because that's the thing that's keeping us from going very unsettled at the moment the high pressure at the top of us as the westerly winds are trying to push in and that's why we're seeing oscillating conditions next week uh, before eventually the low pressure does win out so we'll have to see what happens to high pressure in the south whether it does try and build over the top, top of us or even further northwards but the theme the gfs is definitely clinging on to the last few days it's for very unsettled conditions it's the first week of february and seeing conditions like this i wouldn't be surprised to see a name storm associated with it as well if you we go to the gm see how that does compare again high pressure over the top of us brief northerly wind later this week and again another change in air mass towards the weekend and then it's early next week again oscillating between slightly cooler northerly winds and more milder west to southwesterly winds as we head towards day 10 though yes <clears throat> Yes, we're still solving this oscillating high pressure, low pressure theme, but you can see all these purples starting to appear through northeast Canada and Greenland again. Signs of the tropospheric polar vortex is really moving towards the North Atlantic and sort of northeast North America. And then again, that could lead on to a very similar pattern to the GFS had into February. So we'll have to see what happens with that, but that could be definitely going on the same theme as the GFS. Now if you go to the ECMWF and see how that does compare, again, high pressure over the top of us, brief changes in air mass over the next few days, eventually a bit of a northerly wind towards Monday, could be a little bit potent down the east coast, but again, a few wintry showers and maybe some overnight frost um, for one night or so for high pressure builds back in. Again, maybe a brief northerly wind once again on the 1st of February, oscillating between milder and colder air masses, and eventually at day 10, very similar to the GM, still sort of in between high pressure and low pressure, oscillating between them, but you can see the big uh, area of low pressure appearing towards northeast Canada. And again, that's the tropospheric polar vortex, or at least a big part of the tropospheric polar vortex, completely dominating North America. That would turn many parts of North America very cold. You put the temperature deviation, look at North America, it's bitterly cold. Combined with very warm upper air temperatures down the east coast, that's really just going to power up the jet stream and could give us very unsettled stormy conditions similar to the GFS. So things can change. This is at day 10 and beyond, but all three models are looking at a potentially very stormy first week to February, or first full week to February. Again, the GFS actually produces the very stormy conditions, the GM and ECMWF sort of creates the precursor to those very stormy, unsettled conditions with dropping that tropospheric polar vortex into North America and Northeast Canada, Greenland area, producing very cold weather through the United States and Canada, but fueling the jet stream and probably giving us very unsettled stormy, but also relatively cool conditions towards the UK. We will have to see, as I said, it is longer range stuff, and there's other stuff going on within the atmosphere, perhaps in the stratosphere as well. We are seeing a warming taking place, perhaps not as major as we suspected uh, a week or two ago, but still a warming nonetheless, and we're still yet to know what the exact impact that will have on the troposphere, and again, that could create a big deal of uncertainty in this. Now, after you finish by going over to the ensembles, just refresh these GFS ensembles briefly as they just are finishing updating. And you can generally see over the course of the next couple of weeks, we are average to generally below average and relatively dry towards the end of January. But into February, turning a lot more unsettled, no huge stormy signal yet. Uh, we'd expect to see a lot more precipitation spikes here, but they are increasing and they are definitely gathering around that 5th, 6th, 7th of February point, which is where the GFS produces those very unsettled stormy conditions. So we will have to see. It is very much in the longer range, but since all three main models are showing it, and a bit of consistency with it as well, I would say that there is a decent chance we see something similar to that, whether it's as severe as that with those huge low-pressure systems in the North Atlantic. We'll have to see, but definitely something quite unsettled looks very possible into early February. But as I said, the general theme is cool, and at least there's another five to seven days of relatively dry weather to get out there and enjoy, it, and enjoy it. And perhaps that signal in the long range could change. We will have to see. If we do look at the ECMWF on some members, not quite as bullish as it being a below average, more average to above average at times, but very similar. Um, you know, 
generally uh, deviating slightly above or slightly below the 1981-2010 mean. Yes, turning a lot more unsettled in the longer term, but not quite as many precipitation spikes or so perhaps more um, higher pressure involved and perhaps not quite as stormy conditions, maybe keeping those low pressures systems further northwards and westwards, at least for London. So we'll have to see there, but regardless, still looking more unsettled in the longer term. We'll just have to pinpoint the details nearer the time. So anyway, looking very dry and relatively cool over the course of next week. There's going to be a lot of oscillating air masses, so those temperatures will be up and down, but the big consistency, as I said, will be the dry conditions. Into next week, we are expecting precipitation to return. Again, what what exact sort of um, intensities and positioning we yet to, yet to say for certain, but looking at these models, it's looking probably more likely the north and west, with the south hanging on to drier conditions, and then those air masses still oscillating quite a bit, with perhaps some brief northerly winds at times. And then in the longer term, it's looking like it could go very unsettled, but remain fairly cool as well, perhaps going very stormy. And if we saw something like that GFS run, uh, and some of the similar GFS runs we've seen over the last few days, we could even be seeing a named storm into the first week of February. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.